Hello and welcome back to City Planner Place where we are playing New Cycle. And before anyone asks, this is not a game about cycling or about building a bike friendly city. It's actually a brand new survival city builder from a brand new developer, Core Engage. And if you're a fan of games like Anno, Furthest Frontier, Timberborn, or Frostpunk, then I think that this game might be right up your alley. Now, I haven't been shy about my love of games in this genre, and I've had my eye on this game in particular for the better part of a year. So when the developer reached out to me about sponsoring a video, I asked if I could play it first to see if it was fun. And after getting absolutely hooked on the game and then getting my wife hooked on the game, I was thrilled to accept the opportunity. So a huge shout out to Core Engage for providing me with early access to the game and for sponsoring today's video. And in this video, we're going to start a new city, go through some of the tutorials, and build a small community. And if you end up wanting to try this out for yourself after watching the video, it is being released as an early access title tomorrow, January 18th, 2024. So I will leave a link to its Steam page in the video description. So let's begin a new game. And in this early access version of New Cycle, there are two game modes available, a sandbox and a campaign mode. And in the future, there's going to be a couple of scenarios as well. Now, for the sandbox mode, you basically get to skip the entire story and build in a peaceful mode without outside threats, such as people looking to steal your goods or environmental conditions that can really have an impact on your city. You can also skip some of the early game tech research, which can really help you build the post-apocalyptic city of your dreams without any of the slog that you can have in early game. And then there's also a campaign mode, which has the story. And that's what we're going to do today so that you understand why the world is the way that it is and we get to see some of those random events that can really make the game fun in my opinion and then we have three maps available to us with a fourth coming in the future we have meadows tundra and step now each of these maps has its own pros and cons in terms of the resources that are available the settleable land and the weather i think that we're going to go with meadow because we're noobs and we want to make sure that we have an easier gaming experience but if you wanted to choose one of the more difficult maps and you didn't want to have a super difficult gaming experience you could also change the difficulty there's an easy normal hard an expert and then a custom mode and i really appreciate this because after you play a couple of times you might realize that maybe you want to have higher migration or a higher birth rate and it allows you to change that difficulty but i think we'll start out with normal and the meadow and we'll just begin a game and here we are in new cycle and the very first thing i noticed is just how beautiful this game is so this is supposed to be a bleak post-apocalyptic world but if you look at it it's actually very beautiful you can zoom in and see the grasses blowing back and forth in the wind some flowers trees mountains in the background the ocean it's all really beautiful the second thing i noticed is that the user interface is very familiar if you've ever played a survival simulator so you've got all your resources up here the things that you can build down here time right here some of the actions that we can take right here the very first thing we need to do is choose a location though and we can see that we've reached this unknown land after a long journey it seems isolated and safe we hope it'll offer enough resources for a new start we've got to choose the most suitable spot to settle in and guide them to set up our base camp so we will do that and we can see that there's a pulsing by residence and that's where we need to go first and set up our main hall this is the administrative center of our small community i like to use this as the center of where I build everything. So I'm gonna be very careful with this. And the way that I can be careful is to look at the different layers that we have available to us. The first is our default layer. It's what you see normally. If we click on our second layer, it's our water layer. And this is where we could potentially extract water for drinking. We've got a wind layer, and this can be useful for setting up windmills for power. And then we've got our mining layer, and this is where we can extract mineral resources. So we wouldn't want to encroach there. And then fertility is areas that we could farm in the future. And then finally, we have our drilling layer. This is where we could extract oil from. So now that we've looked at all of those, we have a general idea of the suitable places to settle. And it's likely this area right here. I think that we're going to place our main hall right here. It'll allow us to basically have most of our production buildings around here. And I think it'll be a really good location for us. Now, one thing you can tell is that we are building on a grid. And if you don't want to build on a grid, you just have to hit tab and that removes the grid. And now you can move in a free form way. And if you hit Q and R, you can rotate your building around. So I love this because you can make a really organic city. Now, there are these old goat trails from previous civilizations and settlements. I don't need to build upon them, but I'm going to anyway. So we'll place this right here and then we get a new message from the community. Now, if you want to read this word for word, you can pause it. I'll give you the, the Cliff Notes version. I'm the governor of this little community. It's been a half century since the solar flare that took out all of technology and sent the whole world into a tailspin. 
everyone went to war with one another using sticks and stones and nuclear weapons, and now civilization's gone. So everyone in our current civilization was born after the solar flare, and they've always known nothing. So we want to build a new society so that they can experience a world with possibility and leave that to their children. So that is what we are doing in this game. So we can now start a tutorial or continue without it. We are going to go with the tutorial and see what we need to do to build up this new world. So there are nine different things that we're going to need to do to get it introduced to the game. The very first thing that they want us to do is build a field camp. So we've got to build the field camp, gather 20 logs and gather 10 stones. And as soon as I click on that, you can see that the resources are visible to us. Now, as you hover in this circle area, that is actually the area that the field camp can service. And anything that's glowing in green is accessible by the field camp. In the left of this, we've got a little interface that shows how much of that resource is available based on our current location. So as we move around, you can see things changing. Now, right here, I can see that there is lumber, stone, and iron available to us. At the start of the game, we can't do anything with iron, but in the future, we will be able to. And this one field camp will be able to gather from all of these different resources. So I'm going to try to place this in a location that gives us the most of everything. And I think that's right about here. And that will take us 14 wood to build. And then if we click on it, we can see our progress towards construction. And the workers will walk from our main camp over to this to build it. And now that that's complete, we need to assign some workforce to it. And now that we've added a worker here, we can see that we would generate six wood per day. And as we increase the number, we increase the number of wood that we generate per day. Same thing with stone cutters. So we have 35 workers available. We'll just assign a ton to them right off the bat. We'll get 14 stone per day. And then for the other two categories, we can't do anything with those yet. We don't have the technology for it, which is why those are not available. And then you can see that we have six of the logs that we need and six of the stones. So we'll just need to wait until these are gathered. And there we go. Tutorial one of nine is complete. And now we've got to process all of those logs into lumber. Couple reasons for this right off the bat. We can't currently build roads because roads require lumber and roads make things more efficient and faster. So by building a lumber mill, we'll be able to build roads. So this is really valuable for us. Lumber's also required to build buildings. So let's build our lumber mill. This takes 24 logs to build. And just like our main hall, we can rotate this around. And you can see that there are actually two fronts to this building where the arrows are. And I'll actually place this at a location where it actually might access both of those fronts. And then once again, we need to wait for this to be constructed. And there we go. So now we've got to select our product and we only have lumber available to us. So we'll select that. And then we need to add workforce to it. And now that I've added five workers, I can see that we're producing 10 of these lumber per day. And a couple of interesting things here, it says how long the building's been operational, which can be helpful if you just built this to be able to check back in on it. And we can also see that it's not connected to a roadway network. So that's what this little red icon is. We are going to lose workforce efficiency because there's no roadway connection between this building and our main hall. So everything needs to connect back to the main hall if you want to have maximum workforce efficiency. And now we just need to wait until we have 30 lumber. And just like that, we have all the lumber that we needed to complete step two. And next we need to build a road. And again, this is to improve efficiency. So we need to build a road between our lumber mill and the main hall, and that will improve the efficiency of the lumber mill. So roads are found underneath residence. And then we have this dusty road. This takes one lumber and two stone. And for our roads, there's a couple of interesting things. First of all, you can see that there's this smoke or dust when you move it around, which I think is kind of fun. Now, you can again build in this straight grid sort of deal. Or if you hold down shift, you can actually select multiple points. And this is going to be really helpful if you want to build curvy roads. And that's what I want to do. So we're going to build a road right here. I'm going to hold down shift, click once, click twice, and you can see we can curve it. Click again, curve again, and then I'll let go of shift and click once, and we get a curvy road. And that road is connected our main hall to our lumber mill, and we've completed our goal. 
And then for our next goal, we need to build a well and produce 60 water. So the well is interesting because it doesn't actually need workers, but it does need to be placed in an area that has water available. Before we build our well, we can see that strangers are now here and they now want to join our civilization. If we accept them, we get two more workers. Right now, it's probably in our best interest to reject them because we're not producing food, but I'm a fool, so we'll accept them anyway. The reason why you might want to accept them is to advance to the next technological milestone. You need to have a certain number of citizens. We'll get into that in a little bit, but I know it's 40, so we are closer to that right now. That's why I accepted them. Either way, we'll go into resources right now and build a well. And you can see that there are these different sources of springs. So if we choose a location that has multiple springs available, it means that our well is less likely to run dry. So it's better to have two springs than one and better to have three than two. And we do have to think about droughts in this game. They do happen from time to time. So I'm going to place this right about here. And while I'm thinking about it, let's build a road to connect our well and our gatherer's hut to our main hall so we have the maximum efficiency possible. And there we go. Now those are connected as well. But just like the other buildings, we've got to wait till this is constructed. But unlike the other buildings, this will not have workers and we'll speed things along. And you can see that indeed this building is self-operational. Our next goal is to collect mushrooms with a gathering camp. So we're now going to start producing food. And this is just like our field camp. But instead of gathering wood and stone, we can now collect meat, mushrooms and fish. So I'm going to come way out here because I can see that in this location, I could collect two mushrooms, two meats and one fish. And then I'll use Q and E to rotate towards that road so we can maximize our efficiency. We'll build that road as well. Now, one thing to point out here, this road is in red. This one's in green. A road that's in green connects to your main hall. A road that's in red does not connect. And along each of these roads, we actually have power lines. So that is a reason why you want them to connect, because in the future, a road that is red will not have power. And after it's built, we can collect mushrooms. And again, nothing else. These other things are locked. So we'll assign three gatherers to collect mushrooms. And you can see that we've got 3,639 mushrooms available. So mushrooms regenerate every year. So it's in your best interest to gather as many as you can. And we should collect our 40 mushrooms in about half a day. And just like that, step five is done. And now we need to figure out how to prepare the mushrooms and turn them into meals that can be consumed by our citizenry which is why we need to build a soup kitchen. Kind of bleak, but all that people will be able to eat to begin with is soup. It's all that we'll have available. So we'll build a soup kitchen and produce 30 simple meals. So to be able to build a soup kitchen, we have to research basic construction. And we can see that over here, our development tree is blinking. This should remind you of like the tech tree in civilization. You need to select different sorts of technologies to research. Basic construction will give us a stockpile, soup kitchen, and the ability to prepare simple meals. So we can start to research this. It will require 50 knowledge, and that is total accumulated community knowledge of which we are generating 39 per day. This will not be expended when we start our research. We just have to have at least 50 to be able to do this, and then it'll take 24 hours, and it will cost us 24 of our 75 lumber. So if we didn't have enough lumber, we wouldn't be able to do this just yet. So we'll hit start research and then we just need to wait. And then right here is our clock. We can see what day it is and the time. And right here, you can see that this menu is filling up, which will tell us how far along we are on our research. Now we have completed our research of the stockpile, soup kitchen and simple meals so we could build that. But before we do that, I'm going to slow things down and go back in here to see if we have enough for living standards. And indeed we do. This takes 30 hours to research. So I'm going to start this now while I focus on building our soup kitchen. So our soup kitchen is again underneath production and now this is available to us to build. It takes 35 lumber and 12 stone. We have that available so we can place this immediately. And again, I'm gonna rotate this around and try to place this in a logical location right near our main hall and then let's build a road to it right away. And one interesting thing is you can see that it uh, creates topography that can uh, work for the road. So this game makes the topography respect you and I can appreciate that. 
And while our soup kitchen was being constructed, we've completed the development for the shack, which is why I wanted to make sure that we were researching that while we were building our soup kitchen. Now, just like our other buildings, we need to select what we're going to produce. So we will select our simple meal. And now there are different recipes that we have available to us. So we only have mushrooms and water right now. So we've got to select that one. But in the future, we know that we have meat available at that gathering hut along with fish. So we could do something there as well. For this though, we've got to really pay attention because we are using two water and six mushroom to produce eight of our simple meals. And that is what people will eat. So we'll select that and we'll assign some workers. And with the four workers, we will produce 29 simple meals per day. And now that we've produced our simple meals, it wants us to take a look at our population management. Now, this is really important, but I want to take a look at one other thing first. If you hover over anything up in this main menu, it shows your base production and consumption. So we can see that we're now producing 29 simple meals and consuming eight per day. Now, that's important to know when we go into this tab right here because we can get an idea of how much food that we could provide to people based on what we're producing and how it will affect their morale and their efficiency. The other thing that we can see is we have different classes of workers. So we have normal workers, craftsmen, and specialists. And then we can see what our population is comprised of. So we can see that we currently have 39 adults, two children, and 21 of our adults currently do not have jobs. And then we can see that within this population class, what we are assigning them in terms of our supplies. So we could change the ration from low to say 16 per day. So this will improve their overall morale and it will generally make them more efficient and happier. And again, we're producing 29 per day, so we know we can get away with that. Now for our water, we currently need 20 per day. We are producing 96. So if we increase this to medium, we just need to be aware that there are certain amounts of water that are going towards producing soup. And if we're not careful, we could overshoot what we need. Now this will not update right away. It'll update the next day. So we just have to wait it out, speed things along. And we've completed number seven of our tutorials out of nine. Now for the next one, they want to increase the ration to regular for two days. Now the interesting thing about this is we know we don't have enough food for this, but we'll do it anyway because that's what we're supposed to do. So we just go back into this menu. We will set the distribution to regular. That's 31 meals per day. And again, that'll take effect the next day. And we've met our goal, so we have our last step. We need to track our people and look at them in our overview panel. So we will take a look at that. And that's right here, right above our development tree. And this is all of your basic information about your settlement. So you can learn about the individual people and their lives. You can learn about your overall efficiency. Take a look at our material supplies and then take a look at the different regions that we have available to us because there are multiple regions in this game. And after going through that, we have completed this tutorial. We are free to play as we want. And interestingly, that completes as we are about to enter winter, which is the most dangerous time of year. So there's two things I want to do quickly. The first thing I want to do is adjust the rations. We know that we can't afford regular, so we'll switch that back to medium. And then I also want to name our settlement. We have camp name as our settlement name. So let's name this New Haven. And now that we've adjusted our rations, we should be banking some each day. You can see that we're producing 29 and consuming 16, which is incredibly helpful couple of interesting things about the winter because it's winter we are no longer producing mushrooms so if we go back to our gatherers hut way over here we'll see that mushrooms aren't available in this season so we could remove these workers if we wanted to micromanage it i'm gonna leave it knowing that those will regenerate but it's something to keep in mind because right now we are currently in a rough spot with our soup because we're currently producing some using up our mushrooms and eventually those will run out so now that we're in winter, one of the things that's on my mind is that we've built no homes for any of our citizens, which means that they're going to be unhappy, cold, and potentially die. The other thing that it influences is our ability to progress to the next level, because to reach the next cycle, we need to ensure that we have enough citizens. So to figure out how many citizens we need, we're going to click on our city's name, and you can see that we have are currently in cycle one. And to get to cycle two, we need to have a certain amount of knowledge which we've met, and a certain number of citizens. We currently have 39 of the 40 that we need to reach the next cycle. And if we don't reach the next cycle, we can't have these next technologies such as the tavern, the forge, the smith, and the windmill for electricity. So we've got to do something about that. 
So let's build some shacks. So the shacks prefer to have 15 electricity when they're active, but they absolutely must have stone and lumber. And we know that we have both of those available, so let's build a few of these. So I know that we've got fertile ground over here, but I'm not overly concerned this whole area is fertile. So I'd, I'll probably go in this area and try to build a pot of homes where folks could be close to their workplaces. And I've built four of these knowing that each one of these homes will carry 10 residents. And I want to grow the population, so I'll build one more. And then to improve efficiency, we will build a road to these. Now, these buildings have this little lightning bolt above them, and that means that they don't have access to power. They would prefer this, but you can see that people will still live there without it. So we've got 10 citizens living in there, none right here, nine right there, 10 and 10. Now this extra overhead coupled with their morale should lead to children being born. Unfortunately, the morale is low. So I want to improve their meal situation. So let's improve our ration distribution to 31 and we will improve our water to regular as well. And then we should probably build another soup kitchen. And I'll wait the day on the well because I want to see if we need a new well or not. And it looks like we're okay with what we have. Now I am noticing that we are using up 100% of the mushrooms that we are gathering to make soup, which means that we won't have enough for our new soup kitchen. So we will need to build another one of our gathering camps. So we'll build it right there. That will at least give us access to uh, meat in the future. And for the time being, we'll build a road over to it. And then while we're waiting for that to build, I'm going to assign a couple of workers right here. And the reason I want to do this so quickly is if we leave this abandoned for any length of time, it'll become overgrown and be less efficient for a while. So we will once again select to have our mushroom soup here. We'll assign four workers. We can see that there are 17 of the 39 available right now, so it's no big deal to assign four right here. And then we'll assign three gatherers over here to gather our mushrooms. 72 available per day, so that should help us out quite a bit. But interestingly, we're still producing the exact same amount that we are consuming, and oh my goodness, we've got a fire. This is part of the story mode, and you can see our soup kitchen is having a rough time so we'll click on this and we'll send a full response so negative 40 workforce to all classes for three days but hopefully we can salvage this building and we rolled the dice and we lost we lost brandon sutton so he died due to the catastrophe so he died in the fire and i think we lost the building so we are further away from where we wanted to be and we lost our building so all oh, we lost two Dang it. So we'll clear our debris and rebuild. And uh, I guess such is life in the post-apocalyptic world. It's not always a pleasant place to be. And now we also have a water shortage because we used all of our water up to put out the fire. So that is wonderful. <laughs> water is life, chief. chief. Need access to it. Burned and battered. We could have an uprising. So things are getting spicy now. So I think that we will try to build another well. This one is tapped out, but if we replace one around here, it should do better for us. Now, one interesting thing, because we don't have this soup kitchen, because we're out of water, we're starting to stockpile a whole bunch of mushrooms. So that is because we're not using them in our soups. Now that we're using them in our soups, we will again run out of water and hopefully get this thing going. Yeah, there we go. So now we're producing 96 over here and 96 over there. And we now have a surplus of water again, which is really helpful because we're using even more than ever before because of our two soup kitchens. So now let's take a look at this burned and battered. And what we're seeing is a message from the workers. We work long hours in the scorching weather without a proper water supply. At this rate, we'll die of exhaustion if we don't lose our minds first. Does that sound like a sensible way to live, Chief? If you think you can get away with abusing us like this, you're wrong. So we've got to do something to put down the uprising. So we'll either give them what they need. So we will actually decrease their working hours and increase their water distribution. Or we can say, just deal with it. And I think we're going to say, just deal with it because we've already solved the water supply problem. 
So fingers crossed there's no uprising. <laughs> <laughs> we can also see we've we've had a year pass now and we can see that we are gaining rations things are getting better we've had two new developments 11 new structures four new people so things are improving now we've also got our log over here and we can see what's going on and one thing i see is that we've got a group of travelers appearing near our settlements and they are currently walking our way Looks like there's two people, and my guess is they are going to want to move into our community. So they'll walk right into our main hall and ask if they can move in. That's two more workers, two more closer to our 40 that we need. Oh, but interestingly, each one of these settlers actually provides two workers, so we get four, which will put us over the threshold. So we have enough for the new cycle, but we'll have to wait till the next day. Let's focus on these real quick. We can see some of our deficits, and we can see that we have a power deficit We've known that for a while. We have our storage almost being full, so we'll need to build a stockpile to have more storage available. And then we can see that people are on edge, negative 30 morale to all classes. And this is because we force people to work in the summer without water, so that would make me on edge as well. And then we're also having a storm. So this storm is necessary to replenish our wells, but thankfully it's not really impacting us in a major way outside of refilling our water supplies because we don't really have any hunters. We just have the gatherers. And just like that, we've reached our new cycle, the new Iron Age. So let's click on this and see what we get. Cycle two, we can unlock taverns, forges, the smith and the windmill and all of these new resources, but we have to do some research first. So the tavern is helpful because it will provide a source of entertainment. We won't have any beer, so it won't provide that, but it'll still be helpful because it'll be a community gathering place. We could unlock hunting and use those meat and fish resources that we have available to us and also start collecting leather, which we can fashion into clothes in the future. And we can go towards metalworking technologies, produce the forge, the smith, iron ingot, basic tools and gather iron ore. So that would be also be very helpful. And then we can start our power grid, which we actually can't do yet because it requires iron ore, which we or iron ingots, which we have not produced yet. So we need to do this before we can do this. So we'll start that research that requires 13 lumber. We have that 47 stone. We have that. And then 860 knowledge. We have that as well. 35 hours. We will have this technology unlocked. And now we just wait till this meter is filled up so that we can work towards some of our metalworking. And now that we've unlocked that technology, we have the forge, the smith, iron ingot, basic tools, and iron ore. So I know that our field camp over here is able to gather iron. That was something that we did very early on. So we'll go back to our field camp and adjust this. So we'll add three of these iron miners. And they will immediately start gathering some of this iron that's available on the ground. Almost 5,000, which is quite a bit. Now we need to do something with all of this iron ore that we're finding. So we're going to need to produce it into something. We now have a forge and a smith available. So the forge can forge iron ingot and copper ingot. So I'm going to build this right about here. And now they'll gather it, put it at the storage and be able to collect it right here. Now we're also going to need a smith to take that iron ingot and turn it into our basic tools. And we'll place that right about here near our main hall. Now that is right on the road, but I'm gonna add another road just to improve the efficiency of getting around. Now this building has a little red icon on top of it and that tells us that we're looking for iron ingot before it can be constructed. So at this point, we'd just be waiting for that which is not a problem. So we'll just go over here to our forge. And as soon as it's complete, we will select the iron ingot, assign three workers to it. So we'll produce 11 per day. And after a day or so, we will have what we need to build the smith. And now that our smith is complete, we can select basic tools and assign some workers. And even though we've assigned five workers, they're not producing anything at all because there's no power. So we will invest in power grid. We'll have that in 48 hours. And we now have the ingot that we need to be able to research this. Now we've got a couple of different notifications here. So I want to take a look at these. So let's take a look at this one, which is losing hope and urgent matter. 
and it says our living standards are about to consume us. We should strive to keep a close eye on people's morale. If we don't maintain balance, we can do nothing but watch our home disintegrate. We should do something to improve morale within a couple of days. If we say that we can do better, we've got to improve morale to above 40. If we say that there's nothing we can do, it'll get worse. So I'm going to say we can make it better. Working with iron, more tools, less toil. This sounds like a task. So now that we can process metals, we should make tools basically. And if we agree to this, we are going to have to produce a certain number of tools. Yeah, we've got to produce 65 tools now. And then we also are being asked to upgrade the main hall. And it says, Chief, a community center made up of just a few tents doesn't feel very secure. We can build something with our resources and crafting capabilities that won't topple with a gust of wind. Let's assign resources and take steps to strengthen our roofs over our heads, though it may not please the eye. We have no option. <laughs> we just have to do it. And this requires iron ingot, lumber, and stone. So because I've clicked on all those, those are all things that we have to focus on. Now, I want to look at the morale first because I should be able to do something about this. And right now, our biggest problem is that we don't have tools. So everyone's accepting of our food and water situation. We could try to fudge this by increasing our rations to boost this up. But you can see already, we're getting negative eight from the tools. So we'll need to improve our tool distributions and maybe supplement it with additional food and water. We don't have any extra water and we could improve the food rations, but my guess is that the next bump up, it's almost double. So we need to be patient. And okay, now we have the windmill and electricity. So let's get building those. Those are going to be located underneath utilities. And we have our windmill. It requires 12 iron ingot and 13 lumber. So we want to place this in a location that has lots of wind. And just like our gatherers, we can see the power production as we move this around. So placing this close to the water is going to give us the most production. So I'll place one right here. And then we need to build a road to this because our road has our power lines built in. And I think we have a road over here already. Yeah, we've got one going over to our gathering hut. So I will extend this. And then I'm going to follow this old road. Not necessary, a waste of resources, but it looks good. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do things that feel and look good. And to me, this is it. And now that this is built, we can see that it's producing a consistent 200 electricity for us. It is self-operational, so we don't need to assign employees to this. And it is providing power all the way back here. So the nice thing about this is all of our buildings that required power now have it. And if we look up here, we actually have a surplus. So this has provided electricity to all of our homes. It's provided electricity to our smith, but our smith is going to have reduced efficiency because we didn't have anyone assigned there. So negative 20 for five days. Okay, we've got to do what we've got to do. We'll assign five workers here. And now we're producing 11 basic tools per day. Now, another thing I'm looking at, our soup kitchen has an issue as well. We're out of mushrooms. So I know that we can research hunting shortly as soon as we have 22 of our basic tools. So I'm going to speed this along and we've completed our upgrade of the main hall. So that is good. That'll make people happier. We're collecting our basic tools. We now have 22 available so we can research hunting and we'll have that in 30 hours. And now we again have a stockpile of tools. We're producing 18 per day, but we're consuming 24. And as I look at this, it's at least improving their morale, but it's not great. I'm going to try to fudge this. So we are going to increase our water distribution. So this will give us an extra three morale right here. We'll increase our food distribution. This will give us an extra five. And then I'm going to increase tools to regular. And hopefully we can kind of maintain. And we've completed our research for meats or rather hunting, not meats. <laughs> so let's finish our last one up, which is community needs. That one, we have everything that we need to start this. 30 hours, we'll have it. That one, I know will make people happier too. Certainly a lot happier than giving them tools that we don't actually have. So now we'll come back over to our gathering hut. And you can see that though there are no mushrooms available, we now have fish available and hunting. So I'm going to turn down our mushroom collection. We'll turn up fishing and hunting 
And that leaves us with only two workers overhead, but we can pop back over here to our soup kitchens and switch our meal. So we'll switch one to be meat. We'll consume less water. That'll help us towards our goal of giving everyone lots of water. And then over here, we will switch this one to fish. So now we're at least producing more meals for both of these. And looking at this, we've got plenty of extra water. So I'm going to once again, increase our distribution of water, have double the amount of water that you have normally. Hopefully that makes you happy. And let's see, we are currently at 38. So we're not quite there yet. We could fudge this further and give them super rations. We've got plenty of food. That's what we're probably going to do. In the meantime, while that is occurring, I do want to build one more building. We're going to build a utility a tavern. It's an interesting way of looking at it, but we're going to add the tavern right here because it needs to be within proximity to the homes. And I like that. They're going to walk to it, so it should be close. I'll rotate this around and sneak this in right here. And that will reach all of our homes and right here. Sturdy roofs. We need better shelters. They want three more shacks which is interesting because we don't actually need them, but I think it's a fairly easy one for us to fulfill and it should improve the morale if we build them. So let's add three more shacks and we again want to be within close proximity of the tavern. And there we are. We're building my hometown. Everyone's within walking distance of the barn. Everyone is happy. So <laughs> there we go. We're completing objectives. We did complete the happiness objective. Let's take a look. 43. So now we can uh, take the peasants and give them a regular amount of food, a regular amount of water, and take back all the progress that they've made. <laughs> you were happy enough for a time. Good enough. And this will at least suppress the uprising. Things will be just fine. And then right here, working with iron, we've done that as well. That again, keeps people happy. And now we've built our three shacks and fulfilled that objective. And I want to point one thing out. The shacks all required electricity as did the tavern. So now we are in a deficit of electricity. So we'll need to build another windmill if we want to keep things going. So I'm going to come way over here by our other one. And there's a couple of things that we could do. We could just add another one along this road, or we could build one right here and extend our road. And the reason why I dropped everything to build this windmill is I know that all the rest of the buildings are less efficient or non-operational without power. So we absolutely need to stay on top of our power, but we now have a pretty significant surplus of power so we could build a number of buildings. Now I want to look back at our tech tree. I think that we've researched everything within cycle two and to get to the next cycle, we again need to take a look at what it takes to get there. 50 people, we would unlock a ton of things, vegetables, herbs, copper ore, coal, clay, bricks, paper, clothing, tailors, technical boot camps so we can get craftsmen and specialists, a scout's guild to explore lands outside of where we are currently at, a pit to excavate stone, clay, and sand, a kiln to produce bricks, glass, and cement, basic mines so we can extract from those mining areas, and then a kale yard to produce kale and some of those herbs. So lots of exciting things on the horizon, and we have the necessary knowledge. It's just people. And now I want to point out a couple of quick things. We've got our tavern right here, and again, we don't have beer or dairy, which would make this building more effective but it is still providing a service to these homes. And as a result, when you click on each of these homes, you can see that we are providing entertainment. So the residents that live here will all be happier. So that is one neat thing. The other neat thing is that we can upgrade a lot of our buildings. So right here for our shacks, we could upgrade it to the next tier if we had bricks, glass, and wire. So those are things that are available once we reach that next level. Now to reach that next level, we need more people and there are two ways that we can get there. We can either have births or we can have people immigrate to our land. We currently have good morale, so we should see children being born. We could try to improve that even higher by providing more rations. We are not consuming very much today. I think that we are going to do that. So we'll say extra rations. Hopefully the folks here end up having some kids because of that. So we'll speed things along and see if we have natural population growth. 
But we don't have to wait anymore because there's a group of settlers approaching our camp and it appears that there's four of them, which we know is actually double since every one of these settlers is two workers. So there's eight approaching our little city, which means that we will cross the threshold and be able to reach the next cycle. And indeed, after we've welcomed them into our camp, we now have 55 workers, exactly what we need. And just like that, we've reached cycle three where all of those things that we just talked about are unlocked after we research them. And I think that this is also where we are going to leave this particular settlement. And before we head out, I want to welcome you to Snowed Inn. And this is a city on the same map that is a bit further along. We've got about 150 people here and things have been upgraded quite a bit. So you can see that our homes are now not shacks. They are now residences. They've got proper roofs and they're made out of bricks. So they are much nicer. It holds 12 people instead of 10. And that is what we've done with most of the buildings here. We've upgraded them, made them better and made them bigger, made them more productive. So as we've done that, we've needed more power, which is why we We've got a bunch of windmills out here. We've also got some of our first power plants. So we've got a coal generator right here. It's taking the, pole, the coal and producing a ton of electricity. So now we've got 2,093 being produced here. We could even take one of our specialists, add that here. And now we've got 5,756 energy being produced here. So plenty of overhead to continue to expand this city. This is probably an early mid-level settlement. I think that you could make this a ton better. Continue to upgrade the buildings and add conveyors and things of that nature in fact if we look at our development tree spoiler alert we're in the middle of cycle five and if you were to play a sandbox game you would have everything unlocked that is in cycle five so that would be all the way through things like alcohol and general workshops medicines things of that nature so we are almost to sandbox mode <laughs> so this is a big settlement but again it is very early on in the game there's a ton of content in this game and a ton of things to do. And with that, I really hope that you've enjoyed this look at New Cycle. It is a really fun game. I've really enjoyed playing it. And I want to thank the developers once again for sponsoring today's video. Again, if you want to check out this game for yourself, a link is in the video description to the Steam store page and it is available on the 18th. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is a little bit different than what I normally do, but I've had a ton of fun bringing it to you and I hope that you've enjoyed it as well. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I really want to thank you for your time today. It is an absolute privilege to be able to bring these videos to you. And I know that this is a little different than what I've been doing recently, but I love doing videos like this and I hope that you enjoyed it as well. Once again, thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.